Hey everyone, it's Mark from Trans Canada Wealth Management. A few weeks ago, we released a video going over three reasons that you should draw down your RSPs or RIPs aggressively in retirement. Now, from that video, we received an email from a viewer asking how they should draw down their RSPs due to their life expectancy being shortened to about four to five years. Unfortunately, this is a reality that many Canadians are facing due to health reasons or simply because they still have a lot of money left in their RIPs because they didn't draw it down soon enough in retirement. So in today's video, we're gonna go over how we draw down our clients' RSPs when they're facing a shortened life expectancy, especially in such a difficult time. All right, so if you haven't checked out our video going over three reasons that you should draw down your RSPs or your RIFs aggressively, you can check it out above or we'll include a link in the description below. But the Coles notes of it, the short summary, I'll uh, we'll just go over why RSPs could be an issue during retirement. So what I have on the screen here are the Manitoba and federal tax rates. Now it's very similar if you're in a different province, just the tax rates are gonna be a little bit different, but we have a progressive tax system, which means that the more money that you make, the more taxes that you're gonna end up having to pay. So in Manitoba, for example, on your income from zero to 36,000, you're gonna pay 25.8%. From 36 to 53,000, you're looking at 27.75%. Until eventually, if your income is over 235,000, you're gonna be paying over 50% tax on your income. So let's just go through a hypothetical scenario here. Spouse A has $500,000 in their RSP and spouse B has $500,000 in their RSP as well. If spouse A passes away, that 500,000 transfers over to spouse B tax-free, so there's no issues there. But when spouse B passes away, so now there's a million dollars in that RSP, all of that income or all of that RSP becomes income in the year of death and you have to pay taxes on it. So you're looking at a tax bill of over 50%. So if you have a short life expectancy and you have a lot of money left in your RSPs, you're gonna to wanna to draw that down more aggressively in retirement to avoid potentially facing a 50% tax bill down the road. So we'll just go through an example. We'll call this uh, Mr. RSP. He's 65 and unfortunately he has four to five years left to live just due to a diagnosis that he recently received. His home is worth $400,000. He has RSPs worth $700,000 and he has a tax-free savings account worth 100,000. So his net worth today is 1.2 million. As far as income is concerned, his CPP pays him just over 10 grand a year and his old age security is just over $8,000 per year. And then he's, his plan was also to make RSP withdrawals of $32,000 per year, which would give him an income of $50,500. And this was enough for Mr. RSP to do the things that he wanted to do in retirement. Now, as far as his expenses, his day-to-day -day or his travel expenses on an annual basis this was $42,000 a year and his taxes were 8,500. Again, his income matches his expenses of $50,500. Now, if Mr. RSP just keeps withdrawing the same amount from his RSPs, uh, let's take a look at what that looks like down the road. So this is an estate analysis that shows us how much uh, would be left over if Mr. RSP passed away at the end of 2023, for example. So his RSP, which started off with 700,000 in it by the end of the year with the withdrawal and some growth, it's now at 694,000. TFSA, haven't drawn on that, currently at 100. By the end of the year, just under 104,000. So his investments are just under 800. His home was worth 400, now it's worth 406 by the end of the year. So his net worth has increased a little bit, just over 1.2 million. Now upon death, you also receive a CPP death benefit of 2,500. So that's going to make up part of his estate. So just again, 1.206 million at death. And then here are the taxes that he's going to have to pay if something happens to him by the end of this year, 341,000. So his estate that's left over is 865,000. So he's essentially losing almost 30% of his total value of his estate to taxes. So that's less money that he's going to be able to leave to his kids. So that's for 2023. Uh, if we look a few years down, few years down the road, again, he has four to five years left uh, as per his diagnosis. So in 2026, uh, three years down the road, his net worth at death is 909,000. In 2027, it's 924,000. And in 2028, it's 938,000. So this is with Mr. RSP sticking to his current withdrawals, which is giving him enough money to do the things that he wants to do in retirement. Again, uh, the issue with the RSPs is if 
you pass away with a large amount, you're going to end up paying over 50% tax. So the idea is to start drawing more aggressively from his RSPs today while he's in a lower tax bracket. So currently, he's po- his income is at about $50,000 per year. So he's in the 27.75% tax bracket. So he does have room to pull more out of his RSPs and still pay tax on it today, but at a lesser rate than he could potentially pay down the road. So what does that look like? Again, this was Mr. RSP's current situation. Now, if we make an updated plan to be more tax efficient over the next three, four, five years from a tax perspective, here's what we would do. So his revised income, again, CPP and OAS, that's not changing. But we would look at withdrawing $68,412 from his RSP, which would bring his income up to $86,912. Now, that seems like a very specific amount, and it is. So going back to the tax brackets, uh, if his income is 86912 he's sitting in the 37.9% tax bracket. Now, we don't want to increase his income any more than that because that's going to start affecting his old age security payments. So he's going to start getting clawed back if he makes any income above this threshold. And the amount that he would lose out on his old age security is 15%. So if he makes $100 more than that, he's going to lose $15 of his old age security. So Essentially, it's an additional 15% tax that he would have to pay on any money that he makes above $86,912. And again, he's already paying, we'll call it 38% plus 15%. Now he's looking at a 53% tax bill, which is higher than what he would pay upon death at 50%. So you don't want to go over that threshold. Now, if you're not receiving your old age security, let's say that you're under 60 and um, you you have a short life expectancy, then it might make sense to go over this amount because you're not going to be losing out on your old age security anyways. So going back to his expenses, so his day-to-day or annual expenses are still the same. His tax bill is going to be higher because he's pulling more from the RSPs. But um, after taxes and his expenses, he's at 63500 So that leaves Mr. RSP with extra money that he can use to top up his TFSA moving forward and also put into his non-registered account. So when factoring those two savings plans, now his total expenses and savings match up with his income. So he's withdrawing more than what he needs, paying tax at a lower rate today, and using those proceeds to top up his tax-free savings account and putting the the remainder in his non-registered account, which is gonna be treated more tax efficiently if something does happen to him down the road. So what's the impact of this? So let's take a look at uh, what's left as far as the estate is concerned. This is the first scenario that we looked at. So we've already looked at these figures. And this is with doing a more aggressive RSP withdrawal strategy. So if something happens in 2023, no change because, again, everything would be taxable in that year anyways. In 2026, his estate would be worth $925,000. So he's in the green by $16,000 by implementing this strategy. In 2027, this strategy improves his net worth by $21,000. And by 2028, this has improved his net worth by $28,000. So you may think that's a lot or not a lot of money, but at the end of the day, this is money that Mr. RSP can give to his kids. And I'm sure that he would rather do that than have it go to the CRA. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you liked the video, please hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.